Hey everybody, welcome to another week here at the Turin. We are working on the rough in valves this week. I'm trying to get the plumbing finished. I got all the parts for it. Uh, besides the tub, everything arrived. So I wanted to install that part. And then I have the boys uh, here again this week. They are helping me dig down in the trench and digging it all out. So we'll see how far they get. I'll give you guys an update on that too. We are up here in the shower in the master bedroom section and we basically have a normal mixing valve or roughing valve also in English um, that we obviously have to install uh, something like this and then what I have here is a multifunction um, diverter and that guy has to just go up where it obviously connects to I'm going to mount it above it and obviously we want to have enough space in between the two valves so that the trim kits obviously don't touch each other and the final piece goes over it but what does this valve do this valve actually gives me the option of um, diverting this the, the flow into well this one would be allowing three different directions but i'm only using two so i'm going to stop this out um, and so basically how this works is um, you have a little twist arm right here that basically lets you um, decide if you want to come out here on the left side if you want to come out on both left and top at the same time or at the top um, obviously if you have three outputs there is obviously more function options but in this case I am just I just have three positions for the arm um, so we have to install that right above it and to do that I am going to solder a small copper piece between the two connections here um, I'm doing a, a copper piece here because it gives me a little bit of better flow especially when both um, functions are turned on at the same time um, why do we have a multifunction tool here is actually what we want to do is we want to have a rainfall shower from the top and we want to have a handheld device also at the same time so therefore the handheld device obviously we don't want to have that always on we just want to have that on sometimes so therefore we will have um, the rainfall shower going up straight um, so it's going to position number two our position number three and then position number one is going just to be the handheld device um, and then obviously position two would be both at the same time so that's what we have to install so i need to obviously uh, make sure i get the right distance and then i need to cut out obviously for the opening when a cup when a cup of uh, pipe goes by uh, by here i need to obviously have a spot where the pipe can co come through So the most important thing about soldering copper tubes is really just cleanliness um, and preparation. So you want to make sure that wherever you're soldering there is no residue 
of like your fingerprint, any of the oil that is on your hands, plus also any glue um, or anything. You don't want to make sure that there's nothing there. So you always want to make sure you um, rough up the surface and make sure it's cleaned really well. We have sandpaper works really well to do that, um, to get all the last grime off and oil off. And then And then you make sure you have no burrs on the inside, of course, because the water obviously goes right by it and you want to have as least friction inside on the water tubes as possible. So make sure that you burr any of the pipe inside so we get less friction. Um, and then obviously, since I just touched it, I want to make sure everything is clean before I solder it. There is also, obviously I do that on both sides. I'm soldering both sides, prepping this well, and then I'm putting it, just laying it like this or something that it obviously won't go anywhere. I might as well put it in the clamp right away. I prepped the fittings that I buy from the store too, just because um, they could be fatty. Somebody could have touched it. And I wanna just make sure there is no burr. Obviously the fittings from the store should be clean to start with. Um, then the next step after you clean your work pieces um, You want to use some flux flux helps the solder move. Um, I usually do both sides flux them well uh, put that information uh, in on there and I'm doing this one on both sides just so I'm gonna do them after each other anyways um, but you want to have some clamp or something to hold the pipe if you're not doing it in, in place, but um, it's going to get really hot, so make sure, be careful. Um, when you attach the copper pipe, of course, copper is one of the best conductors of heat and electricity, so make sure you do not touch the, um, the copper pipe with your bare hands, especially while you're soldering. I'm not going to flux the other side yet because um, obviously, I don't want this to get dirty, so I'm just going to clamp this like this for right now, and then you'll need a torch. Um, the torch um, can be propane or anything. Um, obviously, some of the other gases that you might be able to buy burn a lot hotter than propane. Propane is plenty hot for soldering, so I just tend to use propane because it's quick and easy, and it's um, readily available in most uh, places but obviously um, refer to what you have in your hardware store. Um, and then you have the solder. So what you're doing is you're gonna put the two pieces together and after, while you put them together, you wanna make sure obviously the flux was far enough that it sticks out just a tiny bit, um, like an eighth or a quarter of an inch um, over the surface that you are trying to put. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna heat it up. We're gonna touch on the top um, doesn't actually matter, but I'm gonna touch it on the top um, and right there where I'm soldering, uh, where I'm heating it up, I'm gonna first heat it all the way around. I try to usually on the copper go as long uh, until the copper just slightly discolors. It usually gets this little purple greenish color. Um, so just so at that point I know it's hot enough for the solder. I will then go and touch from the top. Um, with the solder and basically what happens if I touch close to the, to the point the solder will actually be sucked in through capillary uh, functions with the heat um, it will get pulled into the joint um, especially with the flux and then you can check and it actually happens also upwards so if you ever uh, do a fitting where for example you have a pipe standing still like this and you have a joint that you need to add even if you do it like this the, uh, the capillary um, adhesion of the um, or the function the phys in physics um, if you have paid attention there um, will actually pull upwards too um, with the flux so I'll show you guys um, it's actually pretty quick and um, doesn't take very long I try to heat all sides um, so I turning it 
and then whenever it just starts discoloring on one side I know I'm getting close I'll wait until I get all sides discolored uh, you will see uh, potentially the other side um, the smoke coming out on the top and that is from the flux um, is burning also and heating up and it just gases off a little bit so now I know it's hot enough I will hold it there and I will put just touch it with the with this and it's done you'll see it moves around and then actually if you look inside the joint um, the the uh, solder should have come all the way out on the other side so you know at that point you have a solid joint if you look inside and look all the way around obviously if you're doing this in place you might not be able to or if it's the last joint that you're doing um, as long as you do always the same preparation make sure the whole joint is hot um, and you have flux everywhere um, it should have been fine obviously do a, always a, a leak test afterwards but in general this is um, a very simple process and um, isn't really something that um, needs a lot of education to do that obviously keep in mind this is a hot flame um, it gets very hot so don't touch it I will not touch this workpiece now because it is still extremely hot um, this one that I saw that before is cooling down but it's still warm um, actually it's um, if I hold it for very long it actually I think it's still a little too hot but um, so I'm gonna prep the other side and then just continue here. One thing is I like um, the camping version of these um, torches. Um, obviously you can buy a nicer um, end piece, a torch piece, but I like the bottles that are the camping size because they stand more stable on, the, uh, on your table. When you're working this, see, I can see it, I'm, I'm sitting right here um, I actually enjoy having this at the, at the right height for me and being able to see the workpiece while, while I'm doing this. Um, so that's why I like the camping versions of the propane tanks. They're a little wider and stand better. But that's obviously a preference. And if I obviously would do a lot in place and I might need extra um, work area where I need to get into a corner, I might actually prefer the other ones. But for working, um, for just making short pieces like this, it's actually nice to just have the camping version of this. In case you're wondering what lead um, or what solder to buy, I say here lead because it used to be always lead. Um, if um, you're doing something for water, obviously I would recommend to buy a lead free option. Um, it should usually come in your plumbing aisle and it should say it's for plumbing versus for electronics. In the electronics you might have lead. Um, versions because nobody's gonna touch it with their tongue and lick it. So therefore, um, always make sure in water uh, scenarios use lead-free options. Um, I don't know exactly what the material is, but I think it's a silver-based material that is in here and some other um, alloys. But originally it was always made out of lead, so if you have old pipes in your house, um, it could be that you still have um, lead um, soldered spots but um, I don't actually know at what point lead was uh, banned to be used for this, but so always be careful when you buy solder, buy the lead-free version. And even for, they make them in a lead-free version for electronics, so always would recommend that. So the next step is we have to put all the pieces together. Now that we soldered ourselves, uh, the connection between the two um, assemblies, we have to obviously put it all together. Uh, on the threaded connections, you obviously want to use always um, some PTFE tape or Teflon tape and just put that around the threads so it will seal it all the way. I'll do all the other uh, parts first because they won't be so long and be in the way. So you can tell here on our main valve here, 
I am capping the bottom because we don't have a tub and normally if you have a tub connection you would just obviously move that to the normal um, part that runs into the tub and in this case I don't have a spout for that so I am just having a connection on the top so we have the hot water cold water and then tub is closed up so now here is where the copper connection goes on on the top Rough and valve done, so now we need to attach the diverter valve on the top, but I have to put still on the fittings first. So now that we assembled it all, we obviously have to install it. So one thing that I'm still missing is the end pieces, They're, they have ears on them so you can screw them in and then the stub piece for the shower head itself is coming out here. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a handheld device with a hose of course that is attached right here and we'll have a bar either on this wall or on this wall attached 
where that basically that hose can slide up and down so if you want to attach it to um, for the water to come down on your head obviously we'll have it high enough but then also you can just take it off that and use it as a handheld device and um, clean the rest of your body too uh, very easily and <clears throat> These can be installed whichever direction you want, even upside down, it doesn't matter. So I'm just waiting for these, these are on special order um, for the PEX material that I have here. And as soon as they come, hopefully next week, we can install it and be finished with these showers. Well, it's pretty hot up here and I am pretty tired. We got all the rough and roughs uh, placed. We ran all the supply lines for the showers. And so we have to just finish the lastly, con uh, last few connections where the shower pieces actually connect to. But obviously, as, as I said, these are on order. So we'll try to get that done next week. Hopefully the pieces are back, uh, are in stock now. And then we did some digging, I will show a sh short little snippet, just what the guys got done yesterday. If you watched until now, I uh, hope you leave, leave us a comment and a thumbs up. And I will see you guys all next time I turn on the camera. Bye! Here's what the guys got done. They dug down the entire section over here, up until the end of this wall here. And they dug it down, basically down to the level that we need to. Besides, obviously, the French drain that still needs to be added. So maybe next week we can get the rest of this section all taken out and dug the rest of this area down too. But it is pretty hot lately, so it goes pretty slow, especially when it's hot. With everybody is just running out of steam quickly. But we made a pretty big pile already out here. Um, I, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's actually a pretty big pile. Um, so I think we have about a third left in there, so if, if we can get that done next weekend, that will be great.